You can get type 1 diabetes at any age. In fact, over 50% of people who are diagnosed with T1D are adults. If there was a way to know that you or someone you love were at risk for developing T1D, it would be so helpful in not only preventing DKA or staying in the hospital, but also give you more time to get educated and prepare about what is an A1C and blood sugar variations, diabetes devices, and all the other crucial aspects of diabetes management. Plus, you may be eligible for a new approved therapy that can delay the onset of type 1 diabetes by several years. Hmm, if there was a way to get tested. Well, but you look at that. Now there is. And today we're gonna to show you exactly how to get one of these testing kits, what to do with it, and how to interpret the results. I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. And we are taking control of your diabetes. All right, so why are we talking about screening? Well, the fact is that if you have a first degree relative with uh, type one diabetes, you're at a much higher risk of getting type one yourself, up to a 15 fold increased risk. This probably most commonly comes up with parents like myself that have type one diabetes and wanna know, are my kids at risk? And so you've probably heard that we have these antibodies we can test for in the blood that can tell us if somebody's at risk for type one diabetes. You've probably heard that you can get screened, but frankly, it's kind of confusing of how to actually go about doing this. So today I'm gonna walk you through how to do it, what the options are, and one that I actually ordered for myself. So kind of from start to finish. So first of all, on my computer, I've gone to this website. It's called screenfortype1.com. And the first thing you can do is click on this, this thing that says discover three ways to screen. And if you scroll down just a little bit, it says, how can you screen? And there's these three ways that you can do it that are listed here on the left. So I'm gonna start with the bottom one, which is these research programs. And why I'm starting with that is because these are completely free. The two most commonly used are called TrialNet, this top one here, and the second one called ASK. So the kind of easy differentiation point of which one should I use is, is if you're screening a child, somebody under 18, then I would use ASK. And so you click on this, you can fill out the information, um, and they can send you a kit, or you can do a blood draw, whatever you like. Um, if you're an adult, um, or also children, but if you have a first degree relative, trial net might be your option. But you can always click on these and fill out the information, and if you don't quite qualify, they'll let you know, so it's not the end of the world. The second option you have is actually going to your doctor's office. And again, this is most commonly, like again, if I took my child in to see their pediatrician and say, hey, I have type one diabetes, I would like to get my son or daughter screened, the doctor can actually order these labs and it's generally covered by insurance. Um, the problem can be that um, you know pediatricians that aren't specialists might not know what these labs are. They're not super common, so that might be a barrier that you run up in, against, but they could refer you to an endocrinologist to actually be screened. So the final option is this third one up here that says Screening Central. And if you click on this, this is basically a private lab. You can order a kit, but there's no criteria. It's not you have to have you know this certain age or first degree relatives or anything like that. So here, like I click on this button, it says request screening. And from here, you can fill out the information to request screening, put in your zip code, some information, and they will send you a kit. And it says there's options. You can either do a home kit where you can do a finger stick or actually go to a local lab and get a, a, an actual blood draw, depending on your preference. And then it'll ask you, you can try to run this through your insurance. So obviously if you have insurance, that might be the, you know, something you wanna try. If you don't want to hassle with that or you don't have insurance, you can always click that. And then here it actually gives you the costs. So I just clicked on, I want this home sample kit, 144 bucks, and we'll go through um, what that looks like when you actually get it in the mail. Okay, so I have my antibody test um, testing kit that got sent to me. And again, I, I chose that kind of cash option, if you will. So when you open this particular kit, the first thing that it has on the inside um, is just some information to register your kit. There's a QR code there where you have to put in some of your personal information and things like that. That's important to, for how you get your results, etc. So this is where all the blood results are actually gonna go, your blood samples. And what you can see is that these are five little circles. If you've ever done any kind of home lab test, you've seen something probably like this. And in here, they have a couple different lancets. 
So you just unscrew this thing and then you push it into your finger pretty good. And this, this gets like pretty deep because on each one of these circles, you're going to need to put somewhere between like four to six pretty good sized drops of blood to fill up each entire circle. So they're completely red all the way across. And that's worth like mentioning because you know, for somebody like me, an adult, that's no big deal. It still takes probably five minutes to, to do all that. But for a kid, you know, depending on the kid, that can really drive them nuts. So I tried to do this with my oldest son. He just, he couldn't do it. So it's worth talking about because that might be a reason that you would actually want to do an IV blood draw. So once you do that, you fill out all of these, you actually should see some bleed through on the other side. That's how you know that you've gotten enough blood on it. And then you let it dry there usually for a couple hours. And in this kit is also this little biohazard bag that you'd put it back in and then a, like an already labeled for you envelope. So you'd stick it back in there. And then depending on, you know, if it's USPS or FedEx or whatever, that's how you'd return it. This one's actually through the mail. So you literally just put it back in your mailbox, put the flag up, they pick it up and then you just wait for the results. So let's talk about what that looks like. So first of all, they can take a while up to six to eight weeks to actually get the results. And depending on which route you go, how you get your results might look a little different. Generally speaking, if all the antibodies tested, and we'll talk about that, are negative, you might just get a letter in the mail saying everything's negative, which is good news. If something is positive, typically you'll get a phone call to go over those results. So let's talk about what positive means. So in each of these different kits, a different number of antibodies are tested. Somewhere between three to five of these antibodies are tested. And all you really need to look at is if they come back as positive or negative. It's not really how high these values are, et cetera. But if you have one antibody that's positive, to be honest, we don't really know quite what to do with that. That puts you at maybe a higher risk of getting type one diabetes. You should be tested again sometime in the future. But as soon as you have two of these antibodies that are positive, your risk of getting type one diabetes in the next five years is about 50% and you might qualify for this new medication called teplizumab that's been shown to delay the onset of type one. So that's a really kind of important category to be in. So if you get a phone call and you're told that these, at least one of these antibodies is positive, you need to see a specialist. So talk to your primary care doctor about being referred to an endocrinologist. If you don't already have one, talk to your kid's PCP about being referred to an endocrinologist to go over this because there's lots of different pathways depending on what antibody was positive, how many, when to get retested, if you're eligible for treatment and all of that. So we want to hear from you. Have you been screened? Have you not been screened? Are you worried about screening your kids? Any comments that you have, please leave them below because we want to hear about it. And just remember that you can get type one at any age. Um, but it's nice to know if you're at risk or family members at risk because it provides a time to educate and prepare for that as well as learn about these new therapies that can actually delay type 1. So if you want to get screened, go to screenfortype1.com now um, to go through all the steps that I did to maybe get a home kit. So hope you found this educational, valuable, and look forward to seeing you on the next video.